Imagine a gritty, realistic Friday the 13th sequel, but instead of following around the human characters, we follow Jason from the moment he gets resurrected and just follow him as he slowly walks around Crystal Lake wreaking havoc. If that sounds interesting to you, you need to check out this movie. Hi everybody, Anthony from Awesome Anthony Productions. Today I'm gonna to give you my review of an indie horror film that is getting a ton of praise and making all the money considering its budget in a violent nature. But before we get started, you know exactly what to do. At the end of the review, if I've earned it, please leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you never miss any of my new reviews. Now let's get into it. In a Violent Nature centers on an undead killer, Johnny, being awakened from his gravesite in the Ontario forest after some stupid college kids steal his family's amulet from the gravesite. After he climbs out of his grave, we then follow Johnny as he walks through the woods to get that amulet back and finds these college kids, fully giving into his violent nature, and taking them out in increasingly nasty ways one by one until he can grab his amulet and just go back to sleep. I just have to start this review by talking about the kills and practical effects because man does this movie give horror fans super inventive kills to just relish in, with one in particular being probably the most creative and brutal kill I've ever seen on screen. It got a huge reaction out of everybody in my theater. <laughs> And it's honestly amazing how great this all looks considering this movie only had like a half a million dollar budget. There is no holds barred here when it comes to the kill sequences. And though the best one that got an audible reaction from everybody in my theater happens in the middle of the movie, the rest of them until the very end are very shocking and brutal, with every little nasty detail being shown in full view of the camera without cutting away. Oh, that's nasty. I was honestly shocked that an R-rated movie was getting away with so much. And then I looked it up afterwards and realized this movie got a pretty unprecedented wide release considering it is not rated. Aside from the amazing kills and gore effects, however, the coolest thing here is that this kind of feels like a natural progression for the slasher movie. If you're a horror fan or have just seen one or two slasher movies in your life, you should know that it's very easy for them to feel uninspired and unoriginal, but this movie avoids that and feels very original because we're following the POV of the killer, while all the slasher plot and dialogue and stuff with the human characters is happening either in the background, or the only reason we see it is because the killer is stalking them and eavesdropping. For horror fans, this should be a nice change of pace that injects some new blood into slasher movies. Though I will warn you, this movie has a very slow burn because of that. A lot of it is just spent following Johnny walking through the woods. It's been a meme for years that no matter how fast you're moving, if you drive, whatever, the slow moving killers Jason or Michael Myers, they will catch up to you eventually. This time though, we actually get to see where the killer goes and see his thought process and how he actually gets the drop on these kids and how he can completely f up their day or night regardless of what pace they're walking at. Well. We're bone. A lot of people are going to be turned off by this. I had a few people walk out of my theater and at the end I heard some people talking about how boring it was. But this slow, almost serene telling of a slasher story actually worked for me. Really drawing me into this immersive experience and making the violence hit even harder. This is also helped by the fact that there is no musical score here. Just using nature as ambient noise to draw you even further into this immersive experience. Parts of it also kind of felt like a video game, reminding me of something like Dead by Daylight. And the cinematography on display here is honestly stunning, making full use of the beautiful Canadian wilderness while using an interesting 4x3 ratio that really centers all the action and keeps your eyes glued to the middle of the screen. I also appreciate the way that backstory and exposition was done here. Yes, it's still exposition at the end of the day, but learning Johnny's story and what made him become a killer in the first place felt very natural for me by having all the college kid characters tell it as a campfire story, especially with the way the killer kind of stumbles upon them and hangs back and eavesdrops. This also works because it gives you only the most basic necessary information to understand understand Johnny, but also actually leads you to feel a little sympathy for him. Something I did not expect with this deranged undead killer and the horrible things he does in this movie. There is still good in him. Boy, if you don't- It also means that we get to spend as little time as possible with these insufferable characters. We don't have to suffer through lazy, cheap attempts at character development or watch an hour of awkward interactions or any shit like that. We only see a little bit of it from Johnny's POV, like I said, and that's honestly for the best. Because the little bit of characterization that we get from these characters, aside from one badass that shows up later in the film, just left me very annoyed and kind of waiting for them to bite it, if I'm being honest. I hate all of you. You may not feel that, though, and it's possible I may just be a very very twisted and fucked up person. That actually might be true, because not only did I hate these human characters and was waiting for them to die, but I laughed a lot in this movie. <laughs> 
The way that certain kills are done or accentuated or just how insane they are, or the way that Johnny can treat the bodies after he's done with them, I ended up chuckling or laughing way more than I thought I did at this movie. And I definitely think I may have convinced the rest of the people in the theater that I'm a sociopath because nobody else was laughing. Like I said earlier, some people walked out, some people were audibly complaining about how brutal and boring it was, and I definitely felt some eyes on me when laughing during something horrific. You're a bad person. You're a bad person. The last thing I want to talk about here is the ending, because I thought that was just a masterclass in tension building. I won't spoil anything, but at first I was kind of let down. I thought the ending was boring and didn't really gel with the rest of the film, but the more I thought about it afterwards, the more it started to make sense thematically, especially regarding Johnny's story, and it helped me realize that this is kind of one of the best ways to end this film, elevating this unique piece of slasher horror even farther than it already was. I guess if I did have any complaints, it would be that, though I did appreciate the slower pace and the serenity of this film, some of the walking scenes could have been cut up just a little bit to make this flow a little bit faster. Gosh, I feel like we've been walking for hours here. I also thought that, like I said earlier, though the effects were great for a half a million dollar budget, there's one scene involving a prosthetic severed head that just looks super fake like they bought it at Party City, and the fact that it was shown in almost close up for a good two to three minutes just kind of accentuated that fact and took me out of this immersive movie. Overall, though it's definitely divisive and probably only meant for the hardcore horror and slasher fans, in my opinion, this is a natural progression for the slasher genre and I thought they pulled it off very well. Following the killer's POV throughout the movie was a great move that I think really immerses you into this film, even when it results in slow two to three minute scenes of him just walking because you know that they're going to pay off with some truly brutal and astounding blood and gore effects, with some of the best practical kills I have ever seen, stellar cinematography, great and natural sound design, and a surprisingly effective story woven into the film that makes you feel sympathy for this horrible undead killer. And that's my review of In a Violent Nature. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this review, you know exactly what to do. I said it earlier. Please leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you never miss any of my new reviews. While you're at it, you can scroll down in the description, find the links to my socials, leave a comment, let me know if you saw this movie and what you thought. And if you want more of my content, you can click or tap on these cards right here. I'll take you to my review of Furiosa or just over to my channel where you can check out my reviews and my shorts. Thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you next time. Stay tuned.